Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this video is, I mean, the title is something along the lines of why I go all in. And it's a video I've been talking about for a long time. I have referenced this video multiple times, how it's going to be coming at some point. I haven't gotten around to it just because there's always something else to cover in the board game space. There's this news, there's Kickstarters, there's reviews, there's always something else, there's topics and whatever. I just haven't gotten around to this one yet, but well, I'm finally recording it today, so we'll see how it goes. But why I go all in is the idea that Kickstarter campaigns, Kickstarter specifically, although you could apply this to retail in general as well, I would say the biggest example where you can apply it to retail are going to be things like Marvel Champions, uh, games like Marvel Champions, LCGs, uh, even games like Descent, or any game where you have a retail line that keeps coming out with expansion after expansion, you could apply the same logic of why should you go all in? Why should you get everything? And my starting premise is the idea that you shouldn't, otherwise there wouldn't be, need to be a video. I don't have a video titled, Why I Breathe. This is going to get weird quickly in terms of my examples that are bad. But my point is, I personally believe that the starting premise should be not to go all in on games. The very nature of these all-ins, the very nature of getting all your Zombicide, all your Cthulhu that may die, all your Marvel Champions, all your insert whatever, Tainted Grail, how many people do you know who have gone through all of Tainted Grail, not the base game, but all of it. How many people who do you know who have gone through all of Gloomhaven and will go through all of Frosthaven and all of Jaws of the Lion and all of the expansion, I can't remember what it's called, they have an expansion for Gloomhaven, whatever it is, all these different contents, all this content for all these games, people like myself and others keep on getting all that content and then not necessarily always going through it all. And so why are you getting something that you're not going to consume. There's two previous videos I have on the subject. I highly recommend watching them if you haven't already. They're relevant to this video, and I think they stand on their own right. I'll throw links to both down below. But there's going to be why I backed Marvel United, or something like that, or why I shouldn't have backed Marvel United. I don't remember the exact name, but the idea of it was a video talking about how I had gotten everything from Marvel United. Not just this past Kickstarter, but Marvel United and Marvel United X-Men. If you add it all up and you factor in shipping, you're talking about nearly $800 for way too many chibi miniatures. And I absolutely shouldn't have, on some counts. I go through that in the video. And then there's another video, don't buy, don't buy board games you can't afford, or something like that. Same idea, same conversation idea of trying to be mindful with where your money goes, trying to be budget conscious, affordability conscious, trying to think through what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and only doing things within your means, which is more of a tangent to this conversation, but nonetheless worth watching. My starting premise is the idea that you shouldn't be buying something you aren't consuming. In theory, right? In general, you shouldn't be buying something you aren't consuming. That makes sense, right? And yet, when I look at many of the games on my shelves, many of the collections on my shelf, there's a lot of content for a lot of games that I have everything, and I haven't gone through everything. I have all the Tainted Grail stuff. I remember that game I just talked about. I haven't even touched it yet. I haven't played it yet, and I backed it all in. Pick any number of a dozen other games, Oathsworn, Storm Sunder, any game that you can think of that I was interested and invested in, I very often went all in on it. And so why? Why am I going all in on games when I know full well that a good portion of them, I'm not going to experience all the content? And keep in mind, nothing I say in this video means you should do that. This is only what I do and why I do it. Some of it's going to involve justifications, absolutely. Others are just going through the reasons, the evolution of what prompts me to do one thing or another, why I think it is or isn't that bad. And let's just start off with the very first reason, the worst reason of it all, the absolute worst reason. This is the impulse. This is not the excuse. This is the impulse. I have six reasons. This is not a reason. This is just the impulse. There's a joy in owning everything. It's bizarre, but there is this joy. There's this completionist aspect. A completionist aspect that I have mostly curbed in some aspects of the hobby. Take uh, this series, the GIF series, a good example. The, the GIF line of abstract games is a line of games that all have decent abstracts. They're all decent little games. But I particularly like Tsar and Yinch, and the others I think are good, but I don't feel the need to keep them. And there was a point in time where I owned all of it, where I owned all five, six of them, whatever it is. But then I realized I owned games for the sake of the completionist aspect, games I didn't want to play, and so I got rid of them. See, this is where I actually do manage to overcome that. And I do this with expansions too. When there's a game, when there's a system, no matter how much I like the concept of going all in, no matter how much I want to own all the Zombicides, 
when I play Zombicide Second Edition enough times and I realize that Black Plague is going to be the one that sticks around for me, I got rid of Zombicide Second Edition. I had Kemet. I got rid of Kemet Tasadi. Or is it uh, Kemet Tasadi? No, Kemet... What's the other Kemet? Kemet Seth. Kemet Seth, the one versus many expansion to Kemet. I got rid of it once I played it. The completionist aspect of what I have going on in me, the aspect of I want to own everything for something that I like. I like this, so I want all of this. That mindset, while irrational to begin with, I can conquer it once I've tried the rest of it and don't like it. When I've tried the other games in the series and I move on from it, when I've tried the expansion and it doesn't work for me. If I have enough content, Etherfields is a good example. Etherfields is a game where I, I'm struggling to finish the base game. I don't think I'll need the rest of the content for it, and so I'll move on from it. But until I've had that reason to not, I kind of want to own it all. There's a joy in owning it all. There's a joy in having every single Dominion card, every single Marvel Champion, LCG, whatever it is. There's a joy in saying, I like Cthulhu Death May Die, so I'm going to own everything Cthulhu Death May Die. Now, it becomes a challenge to track these things down, especially once you introduce promos to the mix. You end up with these conversations where every Kickstarter campaign that offers promos, every time they have a Gen Con release or this or that, whenever you start having promos, it starts getting messy with the trying to manage it all. And so I don't chase promos. But if you offer it all in a single package, I do get it all. There's a joy in owning everything. It's an impulse. It's not a reason. But there's something there. Vindication, Chronicles of Junagar, Storm Sunder, these are games where I want it all, even though I know full well I'm not experiencing all of that content. At least not anytime soon, maybe in some hypothetical hypothetical reality. Games like Vindication, there's so much content for it. I backed the Chronicles, despite the fact that I have the base game, I have Leaders and Alliances, and I haven't played through it all, and I still backed Chronicles. And I'll continue to back whatever Vindication puts out, irrationally, arguably, because I just want to own it all for a game that I love. Chronicles of Jodhagar. I will not go through all the content, but I, I'm still going through it now, so I want more content. Storm Sunder. A single chapter would have been enough, but I needed all three because, well, I really like Lazy Squire games, and I think they do solid stuff, and so I'm going to get all the content for a game that I don't need all the content. Again, this is not a reason. This is an impulse. The next five are sort of reasons. Price is going to be the first reason, although it has its flaws, and I talked about this during the Marvel United video. Price is going to be the idea that when you go all in on a game system, more often than not, it holds its value. More often than not, you're safe in terms of going all in, especially Kickstarter. It's a little harder when you talk about retail things, when you talk about getting all the Marvel champions, you know, whatever. It's a little harder there. But you're talking about Kickstarter, when you're talking about exclusivity, going all in almost makes sense from a price standpoint. You see, let's take a game. Let's take Dwellings of Eldervale which will be one of many games I talk about today. Dwellings of Eldervale, if you backed the very core base game and not everything else, and then you loved it and you wanted to get the rest, you have to pay through the nose to get it. Versus if you backed everything and you decide it's not a game for you, or even just the extras aren't for you, you can turn around and sell those extras or the full package for what you paid and more. Now, you have to pick and choose the games wisely for this to be relevant. But taking a good examples here, I went all in on Bloodborne. Found that it wasn't a game for me, sold the entire thing for more than I paid for it. The entire thing, not just the base game. The entire full moon pledge for more than I paid for it. Dwellings of Eldervale. Found that it wasn't a game for me, sold the entire thing. I backed it all in for what I paid for it. Too many uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, City Fall. It's a game that I went all in on. I wanted it all, not just the base. Turns out it wasn't for me. I sold the entire thing for more than I paid for it. If you pick and choose your games wisely, very often going all in is the more affordable thing. If you don't like it, you can get all your money back. And if you do like it, well, you're not stuck trying to hunt down expansions that will be ridiculously overpriced because too many people said, you know what, I'll get that ISS Vanguard, but I won't get it sun-dropped. Turns out they love the game, and now they want it sun-dropped. And so they're hunting things down at much more than it could have been. Price is a good reason to go all in. Often is. Where price does fall apart is when you have a game, you like the game, you're not selling the game, but you're still not exploring all of the content. That's where price falls apart. Until then, price on its own is a good enough reason to go all in, and it very often is the trigger for me. I'd rather back the whole thing and hedge my bets there. The problem again comes in when you say, that's great, let's take a, what's a game that I have on my shelf here, I don't know, Massive Darkness. Massive Darkness, or well, we have the new Massive Darkness coming out. We have uh, the Tainted Grail, uh, either Fields, and you have any of these other games behind me that, Kingdom Rush, Kingdom Rush is going to be a great example of this. I've played through the base game of Kingdom Rush. I haven't touched any of the expansions yet, and I still own it all. 
Not only that, but I have Elemental Uprising coming as well. So I have way too much Kingdom Rush, and I'm getting more of it for a game that I'm neither exploring all the content, at least not yet. Maybe I will one day, but it doesn't look like I'm close to that. But I'm also not selling it. So now the price argument falls apart. Price will take you a lot. It will be a lot of the excuse you need for a lot of this. But it will fall apart at a certain point. Which brings us to the other four reasons. Which is where we start justifying some things and having rational things elsewhere. Number one is going to be in the case of miniatures. And this is a personal reason, but it might apply to you as well. In the case of anything with miniatures, my kids enjoy all of it. Not some of it. All of it. Every single game I have that has miniatures in it, my children play with all of it. They don't play the game the game, but they put the miniatures on the table, they have the map, they roll fictional dice trying to decide and make up rules on the spot. They get enjoyment out of every single miniature in every single game that I go all in on. It's a bit of justification, absolutely, but they do get that enjoyment. Marvel United, monumental. Freedom 5, when it eventually shows up, where you have Freedom 5 with the pre-painted miniatures and the superheroes. Every single game, even Kingdom Rush, going back to that one, every single game that has miniatures, my kids get the enjoyment out of every single miniature. And speaking of which, for my end, and this is selfishly and unique to me, or at least unique to content creation, I get the fun of unboxing it all. And you could have the fun of unboxing it, but I, I film it as well. But the unboxing of it, I get the justification of, well, I can unbox the core game of Zombicide, second edition, or I can unbox everything. I had a full unboxing of everything from the original Black Rose Wars. It's a lot more interesting when you have everything than if you just have the core box. Zombicide 2nd Edition, Alter Quest, the number of games that I have managed to do a full unboxing of all the content. Really diving deep down into just all the stuff. I get the enjoyment of pulling them out of the boxes, of seeing them. I get the justification that, hey, I'm doing it for the channel. That's, again, a bit of a unique situation to myself. But there is an enjoyment around the experiential aspect of having it all, of going through it all. It's a little bit of a hybrid with the joy of owning everything, but it's more applied. You know, whether it's your kids enjoying it, whether it's you're enjoying it, you don't always have to be playing with the content for it to be enjoyable for you. Sometimes you're just setting up the miniatures. And if you're a painter, this applies to you as well. If you're a painter, then you're diving down and exploring these, these games in ways that you don't need to be playing at all to enjoy. To get that joy of slowly painting every single little gray miniature and having a amazingly beautiful produced game on your table. Now, the qu next question there is, are you actually painting everything you own? Which is a different conversation. But it's the same idea. You can explore and enjoy different aspects of games without fully playing through every single thing. The next reason, and this is a big one for me, this next reason gives me a lot of leeway for a lot of games. Not everything though. Which is going to be the potential variety. Potential variety is different than actually going through all the content. Let's take a game like Blood Rage. When you play Blood Rage, the original Blood Rage base game, no other content, no other expansions, you'll often go through almost all of the monsters in like two games. You don't need a lot of content for Blood Rage. Blood Rage is an amazing game even if you only have the base game. But your variety might be a little limited. Your potential adjustments to the experience as you try different strategies, the Loki strategy. See, look at my shirt, Loki strategy. As you try different things, you will be limited in the variability the experience gives. Zombicide is going to be an example of something that is a little bit more limited if you just have the base game. The potential variety is the idea that sometimes go having, let's just give an example here, having in Zombicide three types of enemies, let's say abominations, having, let's say, one basic abomination, that's a lack of variety. Having five abominations is variety. Having 15 abominations is the idea that you never know what's showing up, you never know what's going to happen, and you your potential mixes are much larger, much more expanded. The potential variety of games are often a good reason for me, personally, to dive into a game system and to have all of it. This can be true for a lot of things. It can be true for Marvel Champions. The potential variety when I pull out Marvel Champions is huge. The potential variety for too many bones when I want to have an experience and have different gear locks and have different enemies and bosses... It's absolutely huge. And that's before we have Too Many Bones Unbreakable, which is going to be launching on GameFound October 19th, I think. I'm pretty sure that's it. We have Ankh. Ankh, which just landed. And Ankh is a ton of fun. And it's going to be a long time before I actually go through all the Guardians and Clans in Ankh. But right now, any single game of Ankh promises the potential to be different than every game I've played before because the Guardians are so varied. I'll rarely have the same combination. And if I actually do pull one that I've used before, I can easily just substitute it out and grab a different one. 
The potential variety, the potential combinations is huge. Rum and Bones. I have almost every single... I, not every. I have almost every single pirate for Rum and Bones. I don't need anyone near that much to actually have different combinations. But the potential variety, the idea that I will always have a different experience. Six Siege from, from Mythic Games, which I, I went all in on, is another game where tons of content. I don't need all that content. I could survive on half the content and rarely have the same combinations, but the potential of variety is so much more expanded upon. Many of these games, even Marvel United, with the combination of heroes and villains and just tons of variability, the potential variety of a game system, when you go all in, when you have it all, expands so much. It gives you the promise that every time you dive into that game, you're fully exploring a different universe, a different world. And then the last reason, and this is relevant, is that sometimes, not all the time, and in fact, for me, it's probably 25% of the time, maybe. But sometimes when I go all in, it's because I actually get to enjoy all the content. Forget the potential variety. Forget the idea that when I play Ankh, I'm going to try a different combination and I have the promise of a new game every single time, whether or not I actually have gone through everything. Take games like Zombicide, second edition, which I have all this on the table. I've gone through like 90% of the content for Zombicide, for Black Plague, yeah, Green Horse is a different story. But for Black Plague, I've gone through like 90% of the content. For Cthulhu Death May Die, I've gone through 90% of the content. I've played with nearly every single character. I've played all but the, like, the last two scenarios. There's a ton of content for this game, and I've gone through nearly all of it. Super Fantasy Brawl, behind me, above my head over there, is a game that I've gone through nearly all the characters. Well, granted, that's not as big of an all-in as some of these others. But there's a variety of game systems where I actually do go through all the content, or nearly all the content, enough so that I can easily justify having gotten it. And that's where we effectively hit the, the main point of everything, at least for myself. Which is until I back a game, until I get a game, every single game has the promise and the potential that it will be the next one where I actually go through all the content. And I rarely know which one it will or won't be. It's hard to accurately predict it. It's not always about which games I like the most. And this is a, it's usually a hybrid of what I like the most and what's the easiest to table. And I'm saying that as two of these games, not either one of them being easiest to table. Game systems offer promises. They offer potential. Sometimes you find out that the potential is not where you thought it was. And that's where you start having to make hard choices. Do you get rid of the entire system? Do you keep the base, get rid of the expansions? You don't need to own everything. You absolutely don't. And very often you shouldn't. And again, I have a full video on don't buy games you can't afford. If you're putting yourself in a negative or pro a problematic financial state in order to go all in, then you absolutely shouldn't. For myself, I justify it between the combination of price, between the fact that I never know which systems I will fully explore, between the, the promise to myself that as much as I game today, I'll be gaming more tomorrow. Over the next year, I'll game more. I'll find a way to make more time for gaming. Maybe now I'll finally fully dive into and explore Chronicles of Jonagar as opposed to having going through it once, I'll actually try all the different characters. There's all these different reasons and lies, but the combination of price and the fact that sometimes, and I har it's hard to know when, you actually do go all in. And then potential variety. Honestly, most of my reasons are really relevant to why I go all in. At the end of the day, I love this hobby. I've been clear about that in every single video I do. I, I love this hobby. I love the games. I love the temptation, the promise, the... The thrill of getting everything, from backing it all, from seeing the expansions pop up, from getting the expansions, from having it all show up, from unboxing everything, from going through it all, from setting it up and tabling it with my kids so that they can enjoy it, from diving back in myself, trying a different combination of characters, and eventually with some, but most, not most, but with some of my games, actually being able to say that I've played that one enough where I really fully explored the universe that it offered, the universe it provided. And that's, that's why I go all in. It's the promise, it's the potential, and it's the, the love of the game. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Co., and I hope you have a good one.